honor and praise. Glory and power. Majesty and dominion once again be ascribed unto your Lamb of God. Thank you once again, Father, tonight. Thank you once again for your spirit that is alive, awakening every aspect of our being to your very divine intentions and counsel. Thank you for the things that you are going to once again awaken and impress upon our hearts truth that we will be steered once again to connect with directions insight wisdom knowledge and understanding that will be steered again in our hearts oh thank you for your spirit that is already here preparing every heart every mind every human every person to connect to your very divine original intentions for their life i honor you tonight i bless your name oh god thank you lord for that man for that woman that family that ministry that business that you're going to be rearranging, reordering. Thank you, Lord, for tonight that once again we will have clarity of mind, clarity of purpose. We will have clarity in terms of our existence. Our vision will be open. We will see, we will have clarity and understanding into the ways of your spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Except you open our eyes. Except you touch our eyes and open us up into your intentions. We will be blind. We will remain in darkness. We will remain ignorant. We will remain as people, oh God groping in, in noonday without understanding and so I thank you once again tonight that as you bring us to this place where your spirit is tearing our heart to understand your original intentions that Lord we will not be afraid to make a U-turn that indeed we will make our way back to the things that you have planned and ordained for us. That we will indeed reconnect with your eternal counsel for our life. Your purpose and desire, Lord, we will embrace. Yes, our understanding once again will be made clear. Like Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 he says I I ask I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious father may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better verse 18 says I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, may be illuminated, may be awakened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Father, tonight I pray <laughs> that Lord, as you begin to address these issues of vision of purpose and of focus that we will truly be awakened this is our desire as a people as a company in this season in this period that you will awaken us 
to truth. You will deliver us from falsehood, from pretense, from lies. You will deliver us, O oh God, from wrong values. Yes, that we will be awakened to voice of your spirit. Purpose is beyond just being able to do something. Is the rediscovery of your entire purpose, your entire design for our life. It is coming to the original intention of why you created man in the beginning, why you place him on earth, why you gave him, yes, authority and dominion. Vision, Father, will lead us back to your dream. Ah, the dream you have for man, the dream you have for creation. Creation, the Bible says, is groaning and waiting for men who have been awakened. For men and women who have been awakened in Christ. Who have been awakened through Christ. Who walk the earth with a sense of understanding. Not just of who they are, but what they have been assigned and sent to carry out. So I thank you once again tonight. That each and every one of us, as we get to be awakened, we will take our rightful place. We will be positioned. We will be connected. We will be aligned. Yes, we will hear your voice. We will know the matching order. We will flow in accordance to the formation and the regiments of our assignment, O oh God. It is my prayer tonight, O oh God, that there will be indeed a knowing, an understanding, an alignment, yes, an impartation that will bring us to the place where we are no longer shifted, that we are no longer deceived, we are no longer, yes, leered away we are no longer tossed here and there by every wind of doctrine but rather we have a stay a standing a position that we be awakened to this understanding that we have this one life to live and we want to live it to the fullness hallelujah we want to live it not to please men we want to live it not at the mercy of people we want to live it not captured by the spirit of the age. We want to live this life, oh God, knowing that yes, creation depends on us to speak. That there are people out there waiting for us to come into our day, our assignment, our essence and reason for living. Yes, I pray, oh God, that this will not just be another time of summonizing. That we will not just look for something to grab and go and dazzle somebody or group out there. No. But Lord, that this truth will bring us to collide with ourselves. Oh. That this truth will bring us to collide with ourselves. That we will come to the end of ourselves as your day begins in us. It's my prayer, oh God. That this word, oh God will go beyond just nice message. will go beyond just information. Because indeed, some just want information. But Lord, this word will become indeed the power that will transform and revolutionize our life. And bring us to the point and place where we can begin to make decisions that will alter things from the way they were. Father, I thank you. I honor you tonight. Touch my lips again. Touch my lips again. That I may speak as your oracle. That I may speak as one whose eyes have been opened. That I may speak from a position, yes, that is not lofty, but that is ascended in you, O oh God. That I will see, O oh God, from a position, O oh God, yes, that is called the mountain top. That we will build from that order of life. Yes, because we have come to your hill. And we have seen things that mortal men are, are yet to see. I thank you tonight. I honor you. The men and the women, oh God, that you have ordained for this session tonight. Bring them. Deliver us from pride. 
pride, pride, help us to humble ourselves. Help us to hear and respond, yes, to the voice of humility. Yeah. That we will submit ourselves to your instruction, to your beating, to your direction. Yes. Isaiah said, and I was not rebellious to the instructions of God, to the corrections of God. Lord, I thank you. As we get ourselves ready and prepare ourselves, traveling light, laying aside every weight, sins and burdens and distractions and anxiety and focus on the race that is set before us that we would indeed run and not be weary that we will walk and not faint oh father that we will mount up with wings like eagles that our sight will see the city afar that we will journey as the patriarchs journey oh god i thank you tonight touch us help us grace us empower us to the name of your glory hallelujah praise god amen and amen friends once again i want to welcome you thank you as sister priscilla thank you for joining and any other person that is joining or will be joining us wherever you'll be connecting or listening from well tonight once again i want to welcome you to the potter's gate online broadcast let me remind you again that our platform is a prophetic platform. It's a platform that heaven has ordained and designated for the expression, for the sole expression of the heart of God, of the mind of God. We speak as the leading of the spirit. We speak as the spirit of God inspires and directs us. We have no reservation or hesitation to speak the word of God. The people that we are praying, that we are asking the Lord to touch through this platform are people who will take what they have heard and will apply this truth into their life such that their life becomes a mirror and an expression of God's intentions in the earth. People that will become a model, yes, of God's counsel for humanity, for creation. So we are not here to summonize. We are not here just to, you know, be known and to be seen and to be enjoyed we have a divine mandate to build for God a people, to prepare a people who will go out there and represent the entire councils of God for their life, for their home, for their family, for the body of Christ, and for their generation. So we invest in the things of the Spirit, and we will continue to invest in the things of the Spirit. And we also invite you to partner with us, to join us and partner with what God, yes, is doing and is saying through this platform. There are many things that we are declaring and proclaiming from this platform that you will not hear in your conventional churches. And that's why the Lord has earmarked such a platform for those who are hungry, for those who are in search, for those who are yearning, who are longing for truth. Amen. And as we long for truth, there's an attitude that we have to come with. If you're coming to eat at the, at the king's table, you have to come, hallelujah, with a ready heart, with a prepared heart, with a prepared mind. You have to come well dressed in humility. Yes, in, in response to the instructions and to the directions of the spirit. So these are the things that are important, all right? So that when we speak, we speak from that position, hallelujah, of correction, of alignment, amen, of redirection, yes. And sometimes, amen, of, of judgment. Sometimes the word of God comes to judge our heart, to judge our conditions, to judge, amen, our state, because God knows our heart, amen. So we will speak, we will continue to speak, and we will not allow any situation or person or circumstance to, to hinder or to reduce, amen, the authority and the authenticity of the word of God, amen. The word of God is precious, and in this moment in time, where there is scarcity of God's word, God is visiting this place, this platform, amen, with bread. And this is the reason why we can have this kind of a truth coming to us, particularly in a 
time like this where the you know the the, the year is about to end and a lot of people amen, are, are finding you know are, 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 where they can hear where they can receive some form of clarity and direction in terms of you know their life their you know their future you, you understand so what we are what we are declaring are the present truth are the now word amen are, are issues of the of the heart of God are issues that burdens the heart of God are issues of his kingdom amen we are not just preaching or teaching amen to basically you know make us feel good and make us feel nice no the burden of our heart and the burden of our message is to advance the kingdom of God amen for his kingdom we live and for his kingdom if so be we die amen we do not live for ourselves we do not live unto ourselves I do not live unto myself I live as a mouthpiece of God I'm saying this because our words are not just addressed to those that are watching. Our words, amen, are addressed to the realm, to the atmosphere. Yes, our words are addressed to principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness that seeks to hinder and frustrate, amen, and even blind the minds of the people from hearing and from seeing and responding to the word of God. So once again, we address, yes, the powers of the air. We address the the forces of darkness. We address every lofty spirit. We address every proudful attitude. We address every satanic imposition. We address every religious spirit. We address every hum- the spirit of humanism. We address every spirit of arrogance. We declare that this place you will not take. You will not stay here because indeed we have come in the name of the Lord and we set the rankings of the spirit upon this place, upon this realm and upon, yes, the atmosphere of those that are listening and watching us. We proclaim and we declare that the word of God like an arrow will continue to break forth barriers and limitation. The word of God like a, like a sword of the spirit will continue to tear down and pull down and break through. Yes, the word of God will divide the soul and the spirit so that there can be clarity of purpose and clarity of intention that every sense of fogginess and confusion in the minds of men will be tear down. For indeed we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places we declare that we engage you today in the name of jesus we declare that you that have presented the wrong gospel represented the wrong idea presented the wrong value to the people such that people are confused and they found themselves in the state of a lie that they have come to believe that is the truth we pray oh god open the veil open their eyes help them to see help them to know help them to hear help them to understand that this is the day of war war that defines their destiny so father we thank you that our word once again tonight uh, we undress men will undress will undress their mind will undress yes their thought pattern will undress their belief system lord as you engage them as you engage us oh god you will undress us yes that when you say adam where are you we will come out and say here am i naked uh, i have done what i'm not supposed to do but i need you lord to clothe me lord that we will remove the fig leaf for the days of the figs are over and the days yes of of just the animal skins are over this is the day where we are asking once again for your glory to cover us so anoint us oh god that we may declare messages that will bring oh god once again the glory of the lord yes the bible says and in that day david set set in his mind to bring back the ark of god into the land Our desire is to bring back the glory and the presence of God. So help us, Holy Spirit, that the things that we declare will enhance the return of the Lord. Will enhance the return of the Lord. The Lord, this will not just be mere words. No, Jesus says the words that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. God, may we not reduce the values of the spirit and life of your word. May we not trivialize them, oh God. May every wrong agenda, religious spirits that we are dealing with. Oh, friends, I perceive in my spirit since morning that we are dealing with some powerful principalities here. Camouflaging, <laughs> camouflaging in, in, in religious, you know, spirits. Yes, 
counterfeiting the things of God. The Bible says ever learning, but they never come to the knowledge of God. I perceive that as we began to you know, you know, I engage this teaching. Suddenly, we begin to address some principality, and we dare to say those powers uh, that that as him that that is blocking the minds of men, yes, will be nullified because I do not come by my own idea, by my own word. I do not come in my own name, but I have come in the authority and in the power of him who sent me. I proclaim that I wear, yes, the authority of my apostolic ministry, and I engage every force of hell every sense of, of, of demonic interference I declare the minds of men will be open they will be they will come to the realization of the intentions of God for their life and they will be altered hallelujah the spirit of the Lord the zeal of the Lord will perfect these things oh hallelujah glory to Jesus we proclaim a shift in the realm of the spirit Oh, once again, I pray that the glorious Father will give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It will give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that the eyes of your heart may be open so you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened this message is to open the eyes of your heart is to help you to know him better it's in the place of knowing the Lord that we get to know ourselves vis-a-vis that we get to know his essence and purpose for our life oh what a shift in the spirit I just I just feel a shift in the spirit and we want to give glory and thanks to God for that Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You know, friends, messages like this, they are double-edged sword. These are not messages that we trivialize. You know, because what this message intends to do is to engage, oh Father, thank you, Lord, is to engage a major principality that has been positioned within the minds of men in the church that has given people a false sense of a false sense of purpose that has given people a false sense of vision you see where you have a false sense of purpose and a false sense of vision your the entire structure the entire philosophy of your life amen cannot be cannot be correct because what defines who you are and what you do, amen, is sourced from a position of what you believe. So one of the things that we are engaged in, amen, is the lies that we have bought in the name of truth. And this is why, you know, the fact that I'm able to come to say, amen, that purpose is not vision and vision is not purpose. That, that, that itself, amen, is enough to create chaos, is enough to create confusion. Amen. Not just among some of our followers, but even among men of God, you know, women of God, because what is he talking about? But well, we're not saying anything that is far-fetched from the word of God. So you can begin to understand, amen. Yes, the the, 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 the backlash of, 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 of just mentioning some of these things. But guess what? We have to. Because this is one of the reasons why the Lord has sent me. Amen. I am functioning within amen the mandate of my assignment. And I'm hoping and praying that this word, amen, will continue to cut through. All right? This word will challenge our position of belief, will challenge our position, amen, of philosophy, will challenge our positions of values. Yes. Many have, have built all kinds of, you know, uh, messages around that which is not biblically correct. And what I'm hoping and praying that God will continue to help us amen to do is to you know look at the word of God brick by brick look at the word of God stone by stone stand by step amen look at the values and the principles in the word of God and see how God engages amen yes his, his people and, and come come out with yes a divine blueprint because we need that in this season we live in 
Para, I, I, you know, th th there are some things that I'm going to be, you know, sharing with us. That, I mean, will blow your mind. The nature of the days that we live in demands that we move from a position of error. That we move from the position of assumption. That we move from a position of presumption. That we move from a position of falsehood. That will move from a position of, well, I'm not sure, maybe. No, no. You have to know the truth. And it's that truth that sets you free. Amen? Re in regards to every aspect of your life. Like I said this morning, what we're dealing with is not just limited to one aspect. This message, amen, crosses every spectrum of human existence. You want to marry, you want to make a choice, amen, of a life partner, amen. You want to raise children, amen. You want to start a business, you, you, you have been calling to a ministry. All of the areas of life, amen. You want to you want to function as a state, as a state man. Whatever it is, amen, that you believe your life, amen, uh, uh, is gravitating to us, need the solidity of this message to be able to, amen, at least begin to refine and redefine your life so you can function in a way, amen, that will bring glory to God. Because at the end of the day, our life has been designed, arranged by God to bring glory to his name. So whatever we are talking about and whatever we're dealing with, amen, seeks to correct amen certain uh, 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 anomalies in our life certain errors certain falsehood false position and there are a lot of them amen there are a lot of false positions there are a lot of false falsehood and and all kinds of things that are er erroneous that we are we have bought that we're still teaching in the church amen that contradicts the very values amen of vision that contradicts the essence of purpose, amen, and 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 redirect our strength in terms of what we focus on. See, when 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 the order of what you define to be vision and purpose is skewed, your focus, your priority, your investment, hallelujah, <laughs> will be out of tune, will be out of order, hallelujah. So. Once again, it's my prayer that through these teachings, that God will grant you, amen, to have clarity, that you will have understanding, that you will have, amen, insight, that you will have, amen, foresight, that there will be an awakening within your spirit to align you, to position you in such a manner, amen, that how you engage your life, hallelujah, is 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 with what i call divine intention because indeed the father wants us to live amen and and, and a life amen that is driven amen a life that is aligned a life amen that is connected well you've heard me said it the fact that we've got a gift the fact that we have talent the fact that we are skillful in certain areas or in certain things do not really define, amen, that we are actually functioning in our vision, in our assigned calling. All right? You know, it doesn't. But that could be a, a sign that God has invested something in us, amen? Yes, that he wants us to carry out by giving us those grace, those talents, or whatever it is, amen? Yes. And all of this we want to understand, you know, okay, let, let, let's, let's leave it that way. And let's go into some of our notes. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to quickly start with uh, one or two scriptures. And then um, I'm going to go back maybe just to reference some of the things that we talked about uh, this, you know, this morning. What a time we have this morning. What a release. What an impression. What a deposit. What a seed sown. Amen. Yes. Uh, maybe I, let me take it from this. Let me let me start with this scripture tonight. The scripture is actually is scrolling down, all right, the, the the screen. But let me just quickly highlight this scripture because it, it kind of lays for us, amen, a, 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 a broad understanding of what we are dealing with, and that the scripture is found in Hebrews chapter chapter three. I will take it from 
verse four and five. Every house is built by someone. I mean, if you if you are, if you if you know me and you're used to my teachings, okay, you will know that this is one of the key scriptures that I always like to reference because this scripture, you know, touches every dimension of our you know assignment or calling or purpose. All right. In fact, this scripture is what defines the framework of our spiritual philosophy. Every house, of course, the house there could mean amen, you in terms of your, your person, you know, your family, your calling, your ministry. The house here speaks of amen, the administrations of life. The administrations, amen, the dispensing, amen, of, of, of God's counsel and intentions for our life. So the house, amen, of course, is a place where we dwell, where we live, where we release things from. He said, every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. So we begin to understand that, amen, God in his nature, amen, he, 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 he is the one who defines us. Who defines, amen, who we are, what we represent. God should be the one defining, amen, our values, our motives, our agendas. Yes, if you will, our calling. Of course, he calls us. We just read in Ephesians, amen, that we may know the hope of our calling. There's a calling, yes, amen. There is no, there is no, there is no calling without a vision. The calling, amen, is to is to is to help us to understand that there is an assignment. All right. Once you see something, once the Lord, you know, shows you something, all right, once the Lord impregnates you with something, a calling follows. You cannot talk about a calling without a vision. You cannot talk about a vision without a calling. Maybe I should read that scripture again. Just you know, we read it in you know in passing, but you know, there's something very profound there. If you have your Bible, let's go back to Ephesians chapter chapter one, and I'll take it again from verse seven, 17. Excuse me, verse 17 says, I keep asking. This is Paul, amen, praying for the church of Ephesus. He said, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom, amen, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Not that wisdom and revelation, amen, are a gift. May give to the spirit of revel the spirit of wisdom and revelation, all right? So that, that's purpose. The reason why they give you, amen, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that, that was so that, can also be translated as purpose or objective. <laughs> you understand? So that you may know the Lord better. So wisdom and revelation is what grants us, amen, the leeway, the clarity, the understanding to know God better. So that he may give to you the spirit of wisdom, he may give to you the spirit of wisdom and, wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Then it's in verse 18, he said, I also pray also that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints so that you may know the hope of his calling when they say there's a calling upon somebody's life it means that there is an assignment it means that there is something they have ordained they've designed amen that person to carry out a calling speaks to a vision. And like I said this morning, vision, amen, are divine. Vision are heavenly. Vision is not something a pastor can give to you. Vision is not something, you know, you know, an, a, you know a bishop, you know, a, an apostle, a prophet can give to you. No, nobody can give you a vision. Vision, hallelujah, is, it, it, vision is what comes from the Lord. Vision comes from the Lord. Men of God, amen, may help you to, to, to build that vision, amen. Of course, that's what that's why they are they're sent. In fact, that's the whole purpose of the fivefold ministry to you know to build the, the saints according to Ephesians, amen. For to train to equip the saints so that they can do what fulfill, yes, the call of God upon their life. 
If we follow the order, amen, in the way God designed it, amen, men of God are not supposed to be the front line of ministry. They're supposed to be at the back end of the ministry. They are supposed to be training. Men of God ought to be, amen. You know, and I'm talking talk about men of God. I'm talking about fivefold ministry. They ought to be your lecturer. They ought to be your professors, amen. They ought to be, yes, you know, the ones that schools you. They ought to be people bringing out resources, writing materials and books, amen, and say, you go read this, go read that, all right. They, 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 they train us, they equip us, hallelujah, and they send us out to go function, amen, within the framework of the call of God upon our life. They are not supposed to be taking the show. That's what the Bible says. But you know that that is not what we're doing. Come on. To equip the saints for the work of their ministry. So the ministry is the saint. The ministry, hallelujah, functions through the saints. The ministry of the man of God is to equip the saints. The saints are supposed to go function in their own assignment and calling. But you know that the opposite is there is what we do. <laughs> All right. That's 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 by the way, but that is very important. Okay, let's continue. All right. I'm just you know laying out this 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 message for us to you know to understand it says every house is built by someone meaning that everyone amen any person who does not who, who is not connected to god who is not connected to heavenly vision who is not connected to the spirit of christ amen have their own ideology their own philosophy their own pattern amen their own model their own way yes the bible says amen all of the trumpets in this world are without signification. But there is one sound God wants us to hear. They said to Moses, Amen. Build according to the pattern, the philosophy, the ideology, the blueprint, Amen, that was shown to you on the mountain. You understand? How does God build? God builds through, amen, his divine blueprint, amen, that he has given his people. God builds through us. He builds through people. He builds through his vessels, his servants, amen. God doesn't come down. You read, every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of all things. How does God build? Does God come down and say, okay, let me build? When God needed to do something in the earth, hallelujah, he infuses his vision. He infuses his dream. He infuses his desire, hallelujah, in the heart of somebody that that he has chosen via his own amen grace and calling and 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 if you will his sovereignty amen he looks at isaiah and say you i need you to be my mouthpiece i need you to be my prophetic mouthpiece and i'm going to give you some temperament i will i will place certain dimension of myself in you so that when you speak you speak in line of that which i have designed there's a dimension earlier of god in me that i express in the prophetic amen that i'm not the press prophet when he speak cannot speak the way i'm speaking why because he does not have a man if you will the divine dna that god gives to me every man of god every person amen god has called has got a divine hallelujah blueprint everyone has got their own mark everyone has got amen their own sense of originality that's why you cannot you know uh, uh try to copy somebody else no you cannot no matter how i was saying to my wife was it yesterday or a few days ago i said you know uh, uh, today we live in a world where you know you have artificial intelligence who can do certain things in fact who can write for you i was sharing that you know where me and pastor edgar were talking about that, that what a day we live in a day we live in that where artificial intelligence basically can do there's a particular software i'm not going to mention that software but i mean this thing can basically do anything can engage amen you on any discussion artificial intelligence and we're talking i said imagine the day we live in where if you don't have a sense of identity you know you just talk about purpose you just talk about you know you know uh, uh, an artificial intelligence amen will actually speak about that subject better than you so you see it's important that you know that you understand the blueprint the the, the if you will the the what's that word now you know that there, there is a stamp of god there's a mark of god upon those that are called that when i speak about the subject hallelujah i'm speaking not just because i'm very good on the subject but because there's a spirit there's a grace Amen. There, there, there is something unique that God wants me to release through his spirit. Amen. Carried out by my spirit. 
You see, you, you, these are days where we've got to appreciate spirits. These are the days of the makings of spirits. So when we talk about vision, it's not just something that we can do. It, 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 it's something about a man that defines the uniqueness, the grace. You see, uh, there's something unique about, about the, the grace of God that allows you to function within that office. That's why when a man of God dies or passes away, we should mourn. We should weep and we should cry because that is a grace that, that is no longer you know, a life, that is no longer functioning. That's a spirit that, you know, that has been taken from us. It's not just about somebody dying. There's more to somebody dying. There's something that you carry that I carry. There's something unique about you. There's something special about you. When the world talks about you are special, you are unique, they have no clue of what they are talking about. <laughs> they have no clue about what they are talking about. This is the reason why Satan, amen, wanted to corrupt the seed in the garden because God, he knew, he knew how God earlier does his thing. He knew that Adam and Eve, amen, amen are special. So he sought a way to corrupt Are you getting the, every house is built by somebody, but God is the builder of everything. Think about that. Every idea, every belief system, every sense of ingenuity, creativity comes from God. And I'm saying this in the context of what we are trying to understand. Because we need to understand the nature of vision. We need to understand the nature of vision. Vision, like we say, comes from God. Vision is, is, is part of the release of the Spirit of God. Amen. Into your being. Every house is built by somebody. God is a, but God is a builder of all things. Now, listen to this. Now, Moses was faithful. The word faithful means he was committed. Amen. He was committed. He was not dilly-dallying. It was not here and there. Yeah. It was not where well, today I'm doing it tomorrow. Well, I'm not sure. Moses was faithful. Now, why, why, why are we looking at this? Because this is important. This is how we get to understand our identity. How, how we are committed to something defines, amen, the values of our life. Moses was faithful. <laughs> He wasn't just full of faith in doing the thing. He was committed. When you are committed, it means that you are persuaded. And that is God's dream for marriage. God expects expect that when two people come together, they must be faithful. They say it is required, amen, in stewardship that a man be found faithful. Moses was faithful as a servant in all of God's house. What do they mean by that? All of God's house. Meaning that, amen, all of the intentions of God that define the context of his mission, his assignment, Moses was found to be what? To be faithful. He was committed in it. Testifying to what was to be spoken afterward. He was testifying, amen, about another person who was more faithful than him. He was testifying that, amen, uh, there's one coming after me, that, amen, that, that is even more faithful when it comes to the issues of the administration, of the economy of God and his house is called Jesus Christ so Moses was like a forerunner of 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 Jesus in terms of amen faithfulness and commitment you say what has what has this got to do with vision oh a lot because if you don't know what we're talking about when they impregnate you with vision you will trivialize it in fact you will throw it away you would throw it away. You wouldn't understand. Or if, if they give you the vision, amen, and your philosophy about life, amen, has been, has been altered, you know, has been tampered with. You see, you, you, will, you will either, amen, go and trade that vision, that, that calling for something else. And I told you this morning, amen, that Moses, you know, in the very palace of Pharaoh, in the palace of Pharaoh, palace of Pharaoh, he was living like a king. Amen. Woke up one day and decided to say, all of this royalty, I'm throwing it away. 
I like the translation that says he rather chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to continue to endure the pleasures of Egypt that is for a moment. You see, when vision, you know, it, it captures you, when you are captured by a vision, <laughs> I told you that in prison, when you are in prison, you are, you are found in prison. Guess what? You will be at rest. Because what defines your life, at least a life of one that has caught the understanding of vision, is no longer what surrounds you. It's what is driving you, what is propelling you, amen. What is moving you? You see, there is something that vision does to a man. You see, like somebody like me. You see, it's this vision that causes me to speak the way I speak. Sometimes people think this guy is arrogant. No, no, I'm not arrogant. I'm speaking from a position of knowledge, and I've been speaking like that, amen, for years. You see, because I'm speaking from a position of knowledge. I'm speaking from a position of understanding. It is vision that 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 say to me, no, rather than your friend say, go come to London and do ministry, and then then London, then you can come to South Africa. I said, I'm not coming to London. Now he was willing to pay my ticket to London. I said, No, I'm not coming. God sent me to South Africa. I'm going to South Africa. It has to take a vision. Because I know that, amen, the lifestyle in London, amen, the, the, the environment in London is far better than to South Africa. But from my work with God, I know that that is suicide. It's like I'm trying to commit suicide. When God sends you on an errand, you then decide to do your own thing. God says, go to, go to Nileve. You decide to pay your way to Tarsus. You're looking for trouble. You're looking for trouble. You see, you, you, we have to understand this. And, and, and what I see in our day is that the, the sense of vision, amen, you know, is dying. The, 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 the burden of vision, the, 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 the passion, amen, of seeking, wanting to know what, what, what is my life all about. You know, I, I, I was... I was um, in, in one of my writings, in fact, I think I have it, if I'm not mistaken, let me quickly look at it. I said, you know, that, that, that there, are, there are these questions that philosophers always ask. Let me see if I can quickly find it. I, 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 put, I, I actually posted it somewhere. Let me see, let's see if I can find it. Yes. Uh, you see, there is this five, you see, five or four questions that philosophers if you're into philosophy, they always ask these questions, all right? The question of, you know, where, who, why, what, and when, all right? Uh, you understand? Who, where, why, what, when, you know? All of these questions that if people are hitting their head, where do we come from, all right? What, why, why are we here on earth, all right? What is happening to us? All of these questions, amen, are answered by somebody who has caught vision. Because a vision, hallelujah, the vision of God, once you cut the vision of God for your life, all of these questions are answered. The question of where we, you came from, amen. The question of what are you doing here. The question of, amen, who you are, amen. Maybe where you're going. All of these questions are answered. And I can answer all, the, all of these questions, you see. But you see, vision is not just an idea. Vision, hallelujah, is a revelation Oh God. Vision, amen. The vision of God for, for you, God's vision always comes via a revelation because a, a vision by nature, amen, is, spir is spiritual. Vision is not just about being able to invent something. When you go and look at the secular definition of a vision, they will tell you it's about being able to create something, being able to do something, being able to achieve something, all right, being able to, uh, 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 you, you understand? <laughs> That's good, but that is a lower, very low understanding and low definition of what vision is. Vision, first of all, by design, is spiritual. 
That's why, amen, those people who are trying to tap into something, they want to do something and they cannot break through. You know what they do, amen? They then go to some places where, you know, somebody can, they can do something or somebody can create an atmosphere of spirituality for them. All of these great guys, okay, who are into, you know, uh, 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 development, you know, is it people who are in Florida, you know, who are into app creation, who are into invention, you know, is it the Googles of this world, the, you know, the, 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 the apples of this world, they all have a sense of spirituality that backs, amen, what they sell to people in the marketplace. Yes, they either go to China or go to India, you know, go to the MLS, go somewhere, all right, and they seclude themselves and, 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 they, and, they, and they bypass the order of the things of the spirit, amen, to connect to certain dimension in the spirit realm, amen, they violate the order of the spirit, amen, and they begin to touch certain things in the spirit, suddenly it's like they get illuminated and they come up with ideas and people say, wow, these guys are clever, no. No. Their cleverness, amen, is connected through a violation of the patterns of the spirit. Is somebody getting what we're talking about? Vision is not you waking up and you, you get a eureka moment. That's an idea. Vision is big, is bigger than an idea. In fact, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sharing with you again tonight some characteristics what how are we doing with time oh my word okay I, I maybe i should quickly go into some of these things but let me let me finish this thought amen every house is built by someone but god is a builder of all things moses was faithful as a servant in all of god's house testifying of what amen is about to come thank you ladies for joining tonight now quickly let me go to this scripture habakkuk quickly I'm just trying to lay some understanding and foundation. I hope this will become clearer to us, okay? Where vision comes from. Because it's important. All right? People will tell you, well, I was somewhere and I had this dream. I had this thing. <laughs> All right? Vision comes with... When you have a vision, there are certain characteristics. There are certain values that we must, we must look for. We must find. Amen? That must be consistent. Amen? Or else, that thing you call a vision might not be from God. Habakkuk 1. I will stand at my guard post and station myself on the ramp on the ramparts. I will watch to see what he will say to me. I will watch to see vision. Vision, hallelujah, like I said, is a channel of your of your spiritual eyes, is an opening of your spiritual eyes. When, 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 when somebody like Saul of Tarsus, amen, was on his road to Damascus, going to carry out a mission, a vision, amen, of the Pharisee, yes, and, 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 and the, and the, and the objective of that vision of the Pharisee is to kill, amen, anything and anyone, yes, calling on the name of the Lord. And this man, this, this man called Saul of Tarsus, he was zealous. I mean, in fact, he believed that what he was doing, amen, was sanctioned by God because the people that sent him are supposed to be representative of God. So he was very zealous. He said, regarding this, I was, I was zealous. He was zealous to go and arrest the people of the way. On his way to Damascus, he collided with God on the way. The Bible says, a light from heaven overshadowed him and he fell from his horse. He became blind. And in his blindness, he heard the voice. And amen. As 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 is as he remained blind in the house of you know the, the person that he was sent. Guess what? He had a vision, he was blind, but he saw the heavens were open. If you read, uh, you know, uh, Acts 16, why he was giving his testimony to King Agrippa, he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I will stand at my guard post and station myself. You see, there is a place, there is a point that you got to connect to if you truly amen, want to be impregnated. You want to know, God, why am I here? What's your plan for my life? 
What is your intention for my life? Amen. You have to take your stand, hallelujah, at your God post. You have to take because if you don't take your if you don't take your stand, amen, somebody else, amen, can dethrone you, can push you away. Amen. You have to station yourself on the ramp. The ramp, of course, is an elevated point. Meaning that if you really want to understand vision, you have to move away, amen, from the valley. You have to leave the valley realm. You have to leave the realm of the mass. You have to leave the realm of noise. You have to. I mean, if you want to, of course, in most cases, God engages us. God impregnates. He opens our eyes to see certain things. But if let's say you've been a believer but you really don't know you don't understand god's plan and purpose for your life these are the things you need to do i will watch to see what he will say to me and how amen i should answer when he corrects me and of course he spoke then bible says in verse 2 then the lord answered abacock amen he said something he said write down the vision so god spoke to him god impregnated him with the vision Vision, hallelujah, is a spiritual investment of God's counsel and purpose, amen, for your life and through your life. For your life and through your life. Vision is an heavenly, amen, investment. And when God invests something in you, God wants you to take care of it. God wants you to be very careful. So God said to him, do what? Write down the vision. So they expect you to be intelligent when it comes to the issues of vision. Write down the vision and make it, make it what? Make it plain, make it clear. Write down the vision clearly and inscribe it on the tablet. So that whoever look at you amen, at a glance can define who you are, what you stand for. You know, there's this saying in the marketplace. They say, if you can't sell yourself, amen, under 10 minutes or in fact some will say under 5 minutes you have nothing to sell <laughs> yes in 5-10 minutes you should be able to amen yes you know you know pitch yourself you should be able to say to people this is who I am this is what I represent amen this is what I stand for you know I go to certain back in the days when I used to go to churches to preach and all of that and I go, go to the man of God uh, what's the vision what's the vision of this house alright well, our vision is to reach the world. I'm like, well, that is a general vision for everybody. What is the vision? What is the tailor-made vision of your house? Why does your ministry, amen, uh, you know, uh, exist? Because I need to understand that because some of the things that I want to say, I want to, you know, be able to help to develop that understanding. Guess what? Even the man of God does not have a sense. He just takes a general thing where our, our, our vision, our mission is to reach the world. Everybody's called to do, to do that. Are you getting my point? He said, write down the vision. So that those who read it, if I read you, what am I reading? There are some people when you read them, you want to re read them, of course, mean reading the vision. When I look at you, when I hear you, I can read you. Some people, they have no sense of, you know, originality, genuine. They are carbon copy of all, you know, many people, many things. A little bit of this here, a little bit of that there. They mix everything. They say, well, then they say, so, no, 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 no. There has to be originality. That's why I tell people, when you pray, I want to feel the originality of your spirit in the prayer. Not just, uh, our, no, no, don't, don't pray generally. There's something about your prayer that, that is you, that is you, you know, is you. It's tailor-made. The things of the spirit are tailor-made as much as there's a community. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, amen, there is that uniqueness. There's that, if you, tailor-made identity. And that is what men of God, amen, ought to help people to discover. Many people have the call of God upon their life, but that call has not been built up, has not been, has not come to, you know, come to the point where the people are confident enough to say, this is, amen, my, my vision. All kinds of things have given them purpose. They like so many things. There's so many things that I like, but they are not my calling. 
There's so many things that I can do, but they are not my calling. I focus more on my calling. I focus more because my calling is the arrowhead, hallelujah, of, of, my, of my agendas, of my objective. Yes, there's so many things that I can do. But I don't focus on those things because they are not the chief. They are not the number one. And those are the things that we're going to be discovering. All right. Maybe quickly, let's go to some of the things that. Um... Okay. This is a nice one. Let, let's look at verse 3 of this scripture quickly. Uh, verse 3 says, it says, in, in verse 3, it says, write down the vision so that anyone who reads it, amen. The, people want to read you. They want to read what you stand for, what you represent. Yes. What, what, what's the purpose of God for you? What's the call of God upon your life? Amen. Yes. You can have 10 churches in the same street. Amen. But those 10 churches may be assigned for different reasons. But anyhow, I don't I don't understand how 10 churches can be on the same street, on the same street, amen, doing different things. But anyhow, I'm just giving an example. So it said, write down the vision. All right, so that anybody who read it can be able to run. In other words, they have a sense of purpose and a sense of direction. All right. And we're going to be looking at that. Vision selects certain quality, certain people, relationship, and all of that. But in verse 3, look at this beautiful scripture. It says, it says, for the vision awaits an appointed time. In other words, there's something God has in mind. Remember, I said God is the author of all vision. And God, amen, shares his vision with us. He impregnates us with his vision. All right? So that, you know, there are a lot of people who are into the apostolic, who are into the prophetic, all right? And they want to impose their own ministry, their own identity, their own idea, amen, of, 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 of what God have told them, of what God has impregnated their hearts, amen, in terms of his apostolic mandate. You see, not to... Ap Two apostles are not the same. Two prophets are not the same. You understand? Yes, we all are moving to us. One grand, you know, a, 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 a journey. One grand, amen, a, a, a position. We're all coming to, if you will, a convergence in the spirit. But guess what, amen? How we get there differs. And I'm not saying in terms of, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 how do I, how do I put it now? Our root is the same, but our emphasis. Amen. A, di a different. That's why God chose 12 people. And I, I was just about to say that, you know, some people want to impose their own apostolic spirit or apostolic calling and grace upon somebody else. And that's not what God has called us to do. That is why it's important, amen, that we understand the, the, the revelation of Christ. You see, Christ is a person, but Christ is very vast and complex because Christ is multidimensional. Hallelujah. There are dimensions in Christ. There are realities in Christ. Amen. There are height, width, length, breadth. Amen. In Christ. And some of us, amen, we will preach certain aspects. They've given us certain dimension of Christ that we, we emphasize. Of course, we want to preach all of Christ, but you always come back to that aspect. Now, once you understand that aspect, don't seek to impose that, amen, on others, particularly on those God has also called and given a mandate. Yes. But you go and preach what the Lord has called you to preach. By doing so, you will be attracting, amen, the people that heaven has ordained and designed, amen, to listen and to follow that mandate, that vision, that calling, amen, that you have been sandal with. You see, that's why I keep telling people, say, oh, this guy took my member. I say, no, nobody can take your member. Because if that person belongs to you, that person belongs to, you know, you in terms of, amen, who they are. You see, certain people are called to me. They're called to me. They're my kind of grace and vision. No matter what I say, no matter how difficult I may sound to them, they will always fall by. Like Peter said, amen, who can we go to? Jesus was saying some things that the Bible says, amen, 70 of his disciples left him. They left. They left. Jesus turned to the twelve and said, "I also, guys, also living." Peter said, "Who are we going to? Where are we going? You are the author of life and the eternal life. We have come, Amen, to rest in you. No matter what you do, you can chastise us, you can rebuke us, you can correct us, but we are not going to leave you because we know that we have come to found rest in you. Vision selects its audience. Vision selects its followers." Vision select, amen. Yes, it's friends, it's relationship. Hallelujah. For the vision is await an appointed time. It testifies, amen, of the end. 
Look at that. The vision is always speaking of the end. It will not lie. Though it lingers. Ah, this is where many of us fail. The place of the lingering of the vision. Ah, maybe God never spoke to me. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's just my own idea. Maybe I, 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 how many years now we've been waiting on this thing? Nothing is forthcoming. God called me to start a church. And we've been sitting with how many people? You know, 30 people. Is that God? Look at that church that started yesterday. They, they are already clocking, you know, a, a hundred. And we're still... Hello? <laughs> Amen? You've got to understand that there are uniqueness. Okay, maybe while on this, let me quickly go there because of time. Let me go there. Let me quickly go there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This morning, I spoke about... Sorry, uh, okay. This morning we dealt with. Th uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sister uh, Sister Priscilla. Thank you for that feedback. I I'm sure this is more legible now. All right. Thank you so very much. All right. Uh, um, this morning we spoke about, you know, this concept. These are, are they? These are they? If you will. The, 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 the character the character of vision vision amen brings clarity anytime you talk about when somebody say a uh, uh, vision all right vision within that person amen that God has spoken to that God has you know you know impregnated th that thing has to be clear to you it must be clear to you we just read it all right so that those who read it not you not you can read it but amen the vision is for others to be able to read and, and know you and identify you and separate you amen a hundred people under pastors or hundred you know people are in the same in the same same hall all right what separates them what makes them unique amen is their vision everybody is called to preach on john 3 16 or on another scripture but the way they come to speak on that same scripture you, you begin to see that there's a difference yes because uh, uh, the vision is what shapes what they see how they see things how they interpret what they see is this clear so vision brings clarity, purpose, amen. It gives you direction, skill, relationship, resource, amen. It, it, there's a, a waiting period, hallelujah. Of course, that waiting period then leads you to a season of maturation, then fulfillment. But that is different from this other thing that I, I'm about to show you. Now, this, this, this is very unique. Now, look at this one. 14 character, 14 called character of vision. Now, some of the things I said, amen, at the first point, may sound similar but they are not the same all right nothing is showing on youtube that's that's strange i'm not sure what's going on it's supposed to be showing <laughs> uh is anybody seeing this on facebook if you're seeing this on facebook let me know statina said nothing is showing on youtube uh, all right if, 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 if please let, let me let me know if you're seeing this on facebook because i'm i'm not i'm not sure why this is not showing but okay we'll, we'll deal with this later on but let me just quickly point on this 14 amen core characters of vision all right the first one that we talked about if you will you can say are the values of vision all right Let's say this one, amen. This one, if you can see it, are the values of vision. They are the values of vision. This one, all right, is what vision manifests. All right, of course, vision gives clarity. Vision gives, amen, certainty. You are not, you are not confused. There's certainty. When you have vision, there's certainty with your life. They say, come to London. They say, no. No. I'm going to, you know, South Africa. That's certainty. It's showing now. Okay, praise God. All right. All right. Vision. All right. 14 core characters of vision. 14 core characters. 14 core characters. This is very, very vital. Vision will always give clarity. There's no confusion. You see? 
So they say, come and follow me. I say, sorry. Your vision will say, sorry, I'm not going. Vision gives clarity. Vision gives certainty. Now, I make a mistake here. I think I put certainty twice. I've got to look at um, that last one. Let me look at what that last one says. Thank you, Jesus. Direction, yes. Number three is supposed to be direction, not certainty. I, 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 you know, I kind of put it twice. Put certainty to, uh, you know, second and and third. So the third one is vision gives direction. So vision gives clarity. Vision gives certainty. Vision gives direction. That's the that's the the third one. Okay. Then the fourth one, vision also gives motivation. You know, you are about to die. You know, you look at somebody like David. I mean, David had got into the point where this guy is like his tired, he's about to die. But somehow he was able to, to summon strength again. Why? Because vision, he was being driven. When you are driven by vision, hallelujah, you will always, amen, be motivated. I'm not talking about the secular idea of motivation. This is a motivation that comes from the spirit. There are times that I feel tired. How am I? Would I be able to broadcast this morning? I mean, I look at the time and like, can I just sleep the more? I just, but it's like that vision of what God have called me to do just wells up in my spirit, and I find myself getting up. And, you know, getting to do the job, of course, with excitement. So, vision gives motivation. Number five, amen. Vision selects those that will assist you. Vision selects his assistant. Vision does not accept, you know, uh, assistance from everyone. No. Because vision understands that certain assistance, amen, is in fact, amen, a plot to kill you, to kill that vision. Uh, they said to uh, Nehemiah, they said, come down, they are coming to kill you. <laughs> Run to the temple. He said, no, I'm not running. I'm busy. I'm not coming down. I'm engaging in something very important. I'm not coming down. Then the same guy, Sambalat and Tuba, they said, come, we want to assist you. Paul said, uh, it's not, not Paul. <clears throat> you know, Nehemiah said, sorry, no, you, you have no share in this. We are not, uh, we are not going to allow, we are not going to take any assistance from you. You've got to understand that certain people, amen, when they say they want to assist you, in fact, they want to stab you at the back. So, you have to have discernment, but vision produces all of this. Alright? Vision selects his assistant. Not everything that God wants you to accept. There are certain things God wants you to reject. Yes. You know, we live in a day where believers don't know how to say no, how to reject certain things. The man of God said, this is not the time to collect, you know, offering because we heal the, you know, the general, the, 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 the Syrian general. The, 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 his assistant looked at him and said, this man, you, you must be out of your brain and we don't have food in the house. And this man has brought all of these things, he's brought money, he's brought, and you said no. <laughs> he, chased the, he chased the general, he went to collect things from me, collect money. The man of God said, is my eye, is my eye not with you when you are collecting this thing? Since you, since you have disobeyed God and you've disobeyed me, you've collected money. Yes, also collect his leprosy. <laughs> God help us. You see, with, when, when you begin to talk about the character of vision, you talk about, begin to talk about discipline. All right? So, come on, let's continue. Number six. It defines your measure of provision. Vision defines how, how much you're going to have. Amen. When you are going to have X, Y, Z. When they are going to increase, yes, your, 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 you know, your income, your godly income, not your salary now. Because vision provides. At some point, vision, amen, vision will be giving you maybe in a month, vision is giving you 10,000. And they say, okay, for the next two years or three years, you're going to be having 10,000. won't give you more than 10,000. But after three years, we'll increase it to 15,000. 
And no matter what you do, no matter how you pray and you bind and loose, you are not going to have more than what amen, have been alluded to you via the vision. All right? You grow with your vision. That's a beautiful one. It sets you free. All right? It sets you free. It defines your sense of priority. Yes. Number seven, vision defines your sense of priority. Not everything is important to you. Not everyone is important. You respect everyone, but not everyone is important. Because everything is done via, amen, yes, the, the, the direction and the instructions of the spirit of vision. Vision defines your sense of priority. In vision, you know what comes first. Who comes first? All right. What relationship you should invest into. And the one you should not. Number eight. It defines your success or failure. The world does not define. Amen. Trend does not define. Family does not define. Friends does not define. The church does not define. Vision. The vision of God for your life defines. Hallelujah. Your sense of success or failure. Success and failure. Amen. Amen. Are subjective they are relative where you can declare success when Is anybody still there? Is the sun back? I think I just had, you know, a network failure. All right, thank you so very much. The network just cut off, but it's back now. The devil is a liar. I told you guys, the devil <laughs> is after this man. Is after this this message. There are certain messages you just know that when you touch it, eh, you are looking for trouble. This is one of those messages. Because this one will set you free. It's going to open your eyes. It's, 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 it's bringing something. It's, you know, empowering something. Sound is bad. Thank you, Sister Tina. Alright. So, where did we stop? Eight. Vision defines your success or your failure. Vision will tell you this is a time to leave that place or this is a time to remain. Everything a man says go. You say no, I'm remaining. That's vision. Everything says stay. You say no, I'm going. That's vision. You see, when you are armed with vision, you're a leather weapon. Nothing, no one can stop you. No circumstance, amen, yes, can, 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 can hinder you. Number nine. What am I doing? I think I've also made a mistake here. Number nine. It helps to avoid unnecessary waste. That's number nine. Please pardon me, that's a mistake. I see that eight eight and nine are the same but it's not supposed to be so just overlook that nine then the next one is it helps to avoid unnecessary wastage you know many believers don't know all right 
how to invest, what to invest in. You see, when you have a sense of vision, vision will be defining your life, including, amen, where you live, the house you buy, amen. Yes, if you need to buy a house, amen, if you need to, you know, a, a move, vision is the one. Because of vision, I've seen somebody, all right, because of vision, move from one state to another just to attend a particular church. It's amazing. This person literally moved from, you know, Johannesburg to Durban just to be part of a particular church because he believed that God has called him, all right, to assist that man of God. And he, he moved from Joburg to, you know, you know, to, 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 to Durban. That is how people can be driven. I, I mean, people like that, I envy them. All right? So, vision avoids unnecessary waste. When you buy, you buy because, amen, that thing is going to enhance. I was sharing about that this morning. It's going to enhance your vision. You buy what will enhance, what should enhance your vision. You don't buy trend. Hello? You hear what I said? You don't buy trend. You don't buy, amen, to be accepted, to be popular. You don't buy because every you, all your friends who are buying. No. Everything that you buy, that you invest in, amen, should be motivating. Should be seeking to motivate, to push you further, to excel, to succeed, to discover, amen. Yes, to fulfill your God-given dream. What you, what you buy and somebody like, why, why are you buying this thing? They're not supposed to query you because you're buying based on the motivation of the vision of your life. You move to certain place because of the vision of God for your life. Not because, well, the grass is greener there. No. Grass is always green where vision leads you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Come on. The grass is always green where vision leads you. Amen. All right. I think there's a lot of uh, um, errors here. Number 12. It informs, vision informs areas of your investment. All right. 10 and 12 almost look alike, but there's a difference. It informs your core areas of investment. What do you invest in? What do you invest into? It has to be motivated by vision. Everything that Jesus did was motivated by his vision. All right? You, you don't do something just for self-security. You do things, amen, because vision is guiding you, is leading you. I like this the thing. It defines your values, your philosophy, and your principle. There are actually people that they don't even have values. They don't have principles. They don't have a sense of you know, uh, uh, philosophy. What's your philosophy? What drives your life? What defines your life? What's your life built around? What's your life? What are the things, amen, that you believe? Most people that I know don't have. But if you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, you should have. There should have be certain values that guide your life, that defines your life. Yes. So vision defines your value system. It defines your philosophy. The philosophy is how you think, what you believe. Amen. Where you should be and where you will not be. The principles of your life. Vision, vision, listen to this. Vision shapes your character and molds your attitude. I talked about that this, this, you know, this morning. Vision defines your temperament. Jesus said, the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. Yes. When you are consumed by vision... You are consumed by zeal. Hallelujah. When you are consumed by vision, you are consumed by zeal. You are driven by zeal. You see, you see, prophet, the way they, some, some prophet, the way they talk, the way they be, be, behave, you, it's like you can't predict them. Yes. Why? Because they are propelled, they are driven, right? By the vision of God. Which of course defines, amen, their motivation, if you will, their zeal. 
and, and we must understand these things if you don't have what propels you what defines you how will people know the bible says write down the vision make it plain so that those who read it i like the translation the, the new living translation says those who read it at a glance they don't have to wait and start no it's so bold that they read it at, at a glance and they immediately know what you're saying so a leader with a vision amen the bible says guide with his eyes a king who knows his authority you know leads just with his eye he just looks around and everything falls in line all he needs to do is just to raise his eyebrow everybody knows what's going on not like when you speak nobody notices you nobody even wants to listen to you no we want to come to the day to the point where we where our life is driven you as a woman amen you live a life driven by vision so that when a, before a man even comes to you the man is already reading you there is reading you say, ah, this one ah, 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 i dare not come close to this one no this one uh, we are not on the same league not because amen you are so uh, you know are so very important because of you know your money or no 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 not because of your affluence but because of the courage the spirit hallelujah that you have you see vision will attract the right people into your life amen as in relationship because i know in this part of the world that's one of the number one problem you cut a vision that's why i tell people you want to get married get married first to a vision because what a true man of god what a true vessel of god is looking for amen is vision people want to marry your vision not marry you they want to marry the vision A man wants to marry a woman, amen, with a vision. A woman with a vision, amen, will, will, will reflect the values of Christ. Honor, respect, dignity. Yes, when you have all of that, no man can look down on you. No man can walk down on you. No, you have a courage. You have a sense, amen, of value and what. Uh -uh. It's not your car that gives you value. It's not where you live that gives you value. It's what you carry on the inside. That is what a man wants to die for. <laughs> Not sex. But respect. Honor. When, when a man sees a woman with, with vision, he will give you respect. <laughs> now before he wakes up, you, you are already praying. You are in the spirit. You are shaping the day. You are realigning things in the spirit. You think that man... The man will think twice before before he talks to you. You understand? Because your life, amen, is ordered by God. And it's vice versa. A woman wants to marry, amen, a man of vision. And that's why we say, amen, men by design are leaders. What defines leaders, amen, amen, Basically, excuse me, in, in line with biblical truth, amen, is vision. You can't talk about leadership, amen, in, in the context of the Bible without vision. Leadership equals vision. Vision equals leadership. So you, 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 you have a man, amen, who, who is here and there, who is, you know, you know indecisive. He, he wants to do this tomorrow, changes his mind. No, 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 no. Then that, that 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 is a man who <laughs> who lacks who, who lacks vision. Men of vision, amen, are decisive. They are very decisive. And if they know that okay, what they're about to do is wrong, they are also humble enough to say, No, I thought I was right, but I'm wrong. So we're not you understand. You 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 must have a sense of vision to have leadership, to have capacity. Friends, I think I am done for tonight. I, I, I hope this word, amen, has, has helped to kind of give us again some sense of direction because I'm looking at the time. We've already done, you know, one, uh, an, uh, you know an hour and a half, okay? So uh, people are going to be going to bed. It's 10 o'clock, <laughs> you understand? Or else, we'll just continue. But we need to stop here. 
all right but we're going to continue i'm hoping i've got um i've got a manual you know a write-up that i've done on this teaching that uh, i'm hoping to uh maybe finish between t tomorrow and next tomorrow just to you know uh, uh, put some things together and just and maybe then release it for us uh, you know some i was looking at this i'm like whoa this material is very very rich very rich very informative god, god sh should i put it out there i'm still contemplating but i'm sure i will i'm sure i will but friends it's nice chatting with you tonight it's night you know just nice talking and looking at this beautiful concept if if you have been touched if you have been blessed amen let me know okay let me know what's you know stood out for you and if there's something you feel okay maybe you didn't fully get oh you can still let me know we can talk about it I, i'm sure we'll have some time where we can kind of have an open discussion on some of this point but i tell you this is very very critical and important particularly as we move to us amen 2023 i want you to be very armed to amen to the truth i want you to be armed and dangerous when the enemy sees you he should pick race because amen this one no she knows what she's talking about she he knows what he's talking about hallelujah the, these ones are informed yes the days of confusion the days of division you see where there is vi where there is division it means there are no vision there vision always unites vision always unites amen where you see division it tells you that there is no vision because vision always help us amen to streamline you know what is what is important from what you know there are some things that are just not important and then you bother your head about those things it means that you've lost a sense of vision but if it's vision that is guiding you and directing you, there will always be unity. Even if there's disagreements. That's why in marriage, amen, we must have a vision. If you're going into marriage, you, because listen, to say you're not going to have a conflict in the relationship is a lie. You're going to have, but what will keep that marriage alive and going, amen, is the vision. Before you marry, hey, mister, what's your vision? See if you connect, amen, with your vision then two can work together because they're in agreement but can two work together what brings agreement is the vision it's not the fact that we are so nice to each other oh this man love me love must be contextualized amen in the formation of vision because vision is what births the seed that we all seek to grow together hallelujah well this is not marriage seven and all but you see like i said this this teaching will touch different dimensions of life all right very powerful yes thank you so much my dear brother uh, uh shafiki nice to have you connect amen very powerful indeed god bless you god bless you yes uh all right okay yes that's sister tina yes it will be great it will be, uh, it will be grateful to for us to have an open discussion on it yes very powerful thank you all right yes we want to we want to see what what we can do amen how we can maybe maybe next year because the year is already gone maybe next year because i'm sure this teaching is going to take us till next year all right i'm only laying all of this as a foundation so that we can have a sense of direction and a sense of purpose don't forget amen this teaching is all about let me show you again all right we are trying to understand, amen, vision, purpose, and focus. Those are the three cords that cannot be broken. We want to engage all of this in the spirit of a reawakening. We want to live, amen, by divine intention. All right? So, and I said, this is a biblical prophetic perspective, amen, on how to live a fulfilled, successful life, of course. See? These are things that they will sell out there, you know, seminars. They will tell you to come and pay three thousand, you know, uh, 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 um, you know, rand or US dollars. But thank God, freely have we received, freely we give. I pray that this truth, Amen, will remain in your life. And of course, if you want to be a blessing to, you know, to 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 the work via this truth, please feel free to do that. All right. Uh, if you want to be a blessing you can do that i think uh i've got um yeah got this let me see if we can quickly do this um all right you can see on the screen in case you want to be a blessing all right to 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 this walk uh please feel free to do that 
you know, uh, my banking details is there. And of course, you can give via um, PayPal, just, you know, just at Potter's Gate. If you maybe want to, you want to give through PayPal at Potter's Gate, and then we'll be, you'll be connected. But if you want to give through um, my bank, you know, the bank, you, you've got the details there also. So thank you so very much. All right, because some people say, well, we want to give, but we don't know how to. Well, this is basically an opportunity for you if you want to, if you want to do that. We don't regularly do this, all right, but uh, just uh, uh, was the last month, I felt a leading that we should at least just sometimes put this thing there in case somebody want to be a blessing. I don't want to hinder you from, amen, uh, uh, you know, being a blessing. So please do that if the Lord Amen. I start your heart. Thank you so very much, everyone tonight who have, you know, joined us, who have been a blessing. I know there are a lot of people that are, are watching that have connected or uh, that I'm not even sure where you're connecting from. And those that will be listening to this podcast later from different part of the world, may the Lord continue to empower you as you get ready to move into the new year. I pray that these teachings will lay the right foundation for you and grant you, you know, the access point to advance. And if there is any form of confusion in your life, may this truth, amen, lay within your heart. Many of the things that we have we have shared can actually be a prayer point. All right. Yes, some of these points, I think I've got, I still have them on my notes. So maybe if you have them, you can pray them. Clarity, vision, all of that. All right. So yes, th that's the main purpose to give you a sense of, uh, uh, you know, resource and preparation so that you're not confused about the, pu the purpose of God for your life, the intentions of God, amen, for your home or family or ministry. So once again, thank you. God bless you. Continue to remain, amen, strong in the Lord. And we'll see you again, hopefully, tomorrow morning, if the Lord permits. Enjoy the rest of the day, or the, the rest of the night, uh, actually. God bless you. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Good night.